Well, I highly doubt you're going to see this, but you can hear it. It is 7.30, I think, in the evening, and we have sleet coming down. After a series of 80 degree days, it's going to be 25 tonight and snowing. It's been raining hard all day. I mean, raining hard all day. And now, I don't know if this is going to show up on camera because I got my old camera with me. And you never know. Sometimes it shows up, sometimes it doesn't. But you can hear it. You can certainly hear the sleet coming down. And it's going to be a rough one. It's going to be a really rough night. I know my parents in Michigan, uh, they were supposed to get a light dusting of snow and woke up to two inches of snow on the ground. This is really weird this year. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what comes, but it's certainly turning to ice. I hope I don't have to go out for anything because it's going to be a mess on the roads tonight. Just wanted to show you that. I think it's cute. It's in the box that it came in. <laughs> the baby. You're cute and you know it, aren't you? Huh? Yeah, she's going to sleep soon. Sure hope you can see this. Oh, this is so weird. This is so weird. I hope this shows up. It's snow on my car. I hope this shows up. If you can't see it, just trust me that there's snow on my car. It is cold. Oh, this is so weird. This year is strange. It was 80 some degrees the other day. <laughs> Wow. It's supposed to snow all night. So weird. This is unusual. There's ice. It's frozen in place. It'll thick the ice. I don't know, you probably can't see it. It's about a quarter inch thick on there. Ice with snow on top. This is so weird. <laughs> oh, it's cold. It's 29 degrees right now. I'm going to go back inside. The RV is only 45 inside. Not good at all. A um, couple more nights like this and my pipes might freeze. So, it's supposed to be down in the 20s for the next couple nights too. So I got some heat going on right now. Try to warm it back up and keep the temperature up. 45 is supposed to be the high today. Um, outdoors. Look at this everybody. Notice something different here? Something new today. I have a big egg. That means my white hen is finally laying. This is her first egg ever. Finally. Little girl's been laying gigantic eggs. I mean, for the size of her body, those are big eggs. And uh, now, white hen has started laying. That is really cool. That means I'm going to have to start eating some serious quantities of eggs from now on. That is good. Eggs went straight to the frying pan for my favorite meal. I always pop in two eggs, a piece of deli meat ends, and a piece of cheese meat uh, cheese end. $1.99 a pound at the deli over here. Pop them in there, put them on low, put a lid on, saves fuel. Once that pan gets hot, I turn off the uh, gas and let it cook itself. Good stuff. Fresh, organic, free-ranged eggs. We got the wood stove going. I have to maintain and maintain heat in the RV, regardless if I'm allowed to sleep here or not, because my food will freeze, and I'm not unpacking this place. So there is one of the trees that I had cut down the other day. Um, yes, I am cutting trees and wood almost every single day. Yes, I do. Um, I just don't show it because I don't want to bore you all to death. There are a lot of things I'm doing here every day that I just don't record. I have daily routines. I have to take care of the animals. I've got 
baby chickens to take care of, big chickens to take care of, cat to take care of. I got to take care of the greenhouse and the the um, seedlings. Um, I've got to care for these guys. I'm waiting for the um, freeze to be done. They are getting to be very nice and tall and healthy. Very nice. So um, they're looking good. They're loving it here on the porch. And uh, even the berries now are starting to to bud out heavily. And um, being on the porch is keeping them safe and alive. The trees are looking good. They're surviving. Although it was uh, 25 degrees last night, they suffered no harm. So I have routines that I have to do every single day. Care for all my plants, care for animals and everything, care for myself, care for the RV. Um, these are things that of course take up my day, um, especially firewood gathering and cutting. Every day, just about every day I'm out cutting, chopping or hauling wood and uh, trying to get uh, ready for next year. It's only just above freezing but the sun has helped melt away all the snow I showed you earlier. That's a good thing. Now. I want to talk to you about my major Craigslist haul from the other day. I'm going to walk you over here to the uh, trailer where I unloaded my Craigslist haul. Now this was the mother load of free stuff off Craigslist. Um, a friend of mine helped me out with his truck and we went and got all this stuff for free. Now, I think some of you will be quite excited for me when you see what I've got. By the way, the camper back there belongs to somebody that rents a room in the house as well. So, this is the middle meadow. There's three huge meadows. Here we have a massive garden trailer, garden tractor trailer, which I don't need because I have one. So I gave this to my friend for his help. It is a home-built, heavy, heavy-duty, rugged construction. Um, all he's got to do is put tubes in there and he'll be ready to roll. This thing is heavy. It took three of us to lift it. That is no joke. Now here's something going to be very useful around the property. Uh, most of you know what that is just at a glance. But this is a, um, a ground roller, a garden roller or whatever you want to call it, to flatten out lumps and uneven areas in the yard. Um, ruts from driving in the mud and evening out the driveway and when I set up my tiny home I'm going to use this to compact gravel and dirt to make it level. Uh, it was designed to be filled with water but there was a pinhole somewhere which doesn't bother me a bit because I got it for free so I don't care. There's the filler neck and I will fill it with concrete and I will have myself a very heavy massive uh, yard roller that was free now here is I'll, I'll save the best for last I'll save the best for last I'm going to get to that now here is a homemade uh, welding cart sadly the utility tray well the welds broke off but it was only spot welded on each corner this was homemade by um, the guy who we got this from, his dad was uh, a good do-it-yourselfer. And he made this. And it's it's rugged. It's good, solid construction. And that's going to help me. I can carry two batteries at a time on this instead of hauling one back and forth. So I'll use screws and put that utility tray back up. And this is going to be an awesome little utility cart for working around the property. I can carry tools and all kinds of stuff in that. This is nice. Very nice little tool for an off-grid homestead. Now, here is a massive Arians snowblower, probably from the 60s I'm going to guess, and also free. Um, everything spins and turns. The bushings are out on the main shaft, so that'll have to be replaced, but that looks to be the same as the go-kart bushings. Both sides are shot. Not a big deal, really. I don't know if you can see that there. It's not a big deal to replace uh, bushings. Um, the tires aren't spinning, so there's something seized up underneath. Uh, it could even be the, um, right here, I think they're seized right here. But anyway, that's fixable, not a big deal. Uh, the engine is free and turns, but there's no carburetor. I'm not going to mess with it. I am not going to waste my time, because it's old. 
I'm just going to swap that out and it's a Tecumseh. I hope I don't insult anyone, but I don't like Tecumseh. So I'm just not going to mess with that. Eventually, I've got all, all year to worry about it. I'm going to sell the little snowblower that I have, the little two cycle, and use this big boy for myself this year. So I'm going to get an engine for that sometime through the summer. Through Wheeling and Indian, and I'm sure I'm going to get one. Now here is a little Briggs and Stratton, probably a uh, two and a half horse that was in the deal and he's freed up and everything moves. I do believe this will run. Um, it doesn't have sparks so the magneto probably needs um, some sanding. At least I don't see spark. I tried to move it by hand and didn't get any spark. But the carb is not uh, gummed up and it was lubed well. So that will probably run. Now, the best of all, save the best for last, here is a massive, massive heavy duty wood splitter, log splitter. This is car tires on that thing. Big hefty car tires. That is incredible. I probably have tires out here in my uh, um, forest shopping mall that I can pop on there. So I'm not worried about the tires. The engine was here. I have the engine. Um, the wood frame had rotted off. The ridden deck had rotted off the engine. It has um, a very nice um, hydraulic pump with a reservoir. Spins up. It's not it's not rusted or or anything. It's all free. And a heavy duty piston. And I do believe he made this himself. His uh, the guy said that his father had made this. This is a serious serious machine. Heavy duty log splitter. Now, I'll show you the engine that came on this thing. Engine's almost as big as a tractor. It's a massive uh, cast iron Wisconsin engine. This is a heavy duty air cooled engine. Model AGN. <laughs> Funny back in the day, just AGN. Very simple. Um, I don't know what that means. Size 3.5 by 4. I have no idea what that means. Um, but. The RPMs, it never did have RPMs. There's a serial number, 310-1618, and spec number, 158726. This spins. It's not seized up. Everything is there. It's complete. The carburetor is rusty because it's, it's all cast iron, solid iron, and uh, it's got iron valves inside, so they're seized up. Um, but it's complete and it even has the original hand crank how cool is that it has the original hand crank so I'm not gonna mess with it I don't I don't I want to lube the top end before I mess with it and show you it does spin you can trust me on that that is so cool that is going to be cleaned up and lubed and put on Craigslist I think it's well well worth keeping around and restoring I'm not gonna mess with it but I think somebody would find this to be valuable because the old Wisconsin engines are diehards. These things, this will probably run. So that's a nice little bonus. That was on the log splitter. So what I'll do is, through my wheelings and dealings with my friend this year, I'll get an engine for this. And before fall, I'll be splitting logs the easy way. Very, very nice. And that big boy is going to bring me some money. It's huge. And it's got a nice little fuel bowl. You can tell it's an antique. So, I think it was a good haul. All this off Craigslist. Got the uh, big old Wisconsin antique engine. Got a good old little uh, two and a half, three horse um, horizontal shaft. Airing snowblower. Just needs an engine. And a big, big machine for splitting logs. This is huge. He measured it. It's eight foot long and five foot wide. It's huge. And it's designed to be pulled on a regular vehicle. It's, it's really heavy duty. Really, really heavy. It took three of us. We had to take off the engine to move it. We could not move it with the engine on it. And it took three of us a lot of strength to get this rolled up into the truck. So, I think that was a good deal. Mega Craigslist haul. A lot of useful tools for the off-grid homestead. Very good stuff. I'm happy.
That's what I did all day yesterday. That's what I did with my time. Working on this stuff. Picking it up. And then uh, this morning we unloaded it. Here's the uh, brewing system that Link gave me. I just ran some water and vinegar through it and cleaned out the system nicely and then gave it a good rub down and wash out so it's ready to use. I'm going to um, grind up some coffee grounds and then I'll show you how this thing works. First of all I think I'll put this on the tripod. I'll be right back. Now first of all you put water in here and if you want a full cup like I do you can only go up to this point. This is like a blow-off valve I think it's a pressure relief valve, so you don't, uh, so it doesn't explode. So you fill it up only to there. If you go above that point inside, it flows out. So you put some water in there. This I learned in Australia, obviously. And then you put your uh, your um, strainer down in here. Now, if I've got this right, I'm going to put the coffee grounds in here next. So I'm going to grind up some coffee grounds or some coffee beans cool is I am off the grid with pure solar energy and I am still able to use my coffee grinder. I don't know if some of you might remember last year I was suffering miserably with no power for anything and now I'm running my happy little coffee grinder. I mixed my own beans because I've got some beans at Starbucks and they're too strong, way too strong. So I mixed some cheap coffee with some good stuff and I got a nice tasting cup of coffee. So anyway, somebody gave me this years ago. I love it. Alright, I got my coffee grounds in there. It's a little insert thing there. And then there's a rubber seal and a filter screen. Goes on top, right there. And then the uh, canister screws on there. It's a really neat setup. Little single cup brewer. Australian way. Now, I'm going to put this on the stove top and uh, start it brewing here. I, all the homes I saw in Australia use gas, so I don't know if that's a common thing, but it sure is convenient in that it fits perfectly when you're using gas. Um, obviously, you can see that there. But I'm going to let that brew I'll, uh, as it starts to percolate. It's going to take a few minutes to heat up. And as it starts to percolate, I'll turn the camera back on and you can hear it. Um, it's an, Actually, it's a percolator. It's a stovetop percolator. It's pretty cool. Single cup stovetop percolator from Australia. Well, thanks a lot, Link. Um, you guys should check out his channel. Link Knight is making some tiny homes. And I think he's got a good future in that. He's experimenting with different materials and building tiny homes. And he sent this to me all the way from Australia. See you guys in a minute. There, the percolating is just about finishing. You can hear it going. can smell it really strong and nice in here. Can't wait to see what this tastes like. You can hear it coming out the top. Yep, it's coming out nice and good. Well, I'll be back in a minute when it's done. Well, here we go. Looks like a good thick cup of coffee. It's strong. 
Do I bruise a whole cup? Wow. And that's it. That's a good 16 ounce cup of coffee right there. I did not expect that much out of that. That's good to know. That's perfect. So that's actually, um, you can make express, espresso with these. My friends were making espressos and made it super, super strong using espresso grounds, espresso coffee grounds, and uh, grinding up fine. And then they added a lot of milk. Australians use a lot of milk, frothy milk, in their coffee. Um, so this could actually serve three, four people easily with this little uh, coffee brewer. That's uh, that's good. That's a nice, nice sized cup of coffee. Well, I'm going to add some cream to it and try it out. That is a nice, strong cup of coffee. I like it. Worked out well. It's hot, but it's nice. It's really good. Well, thank you, Link.